morning and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us for How Shot AG is maximizing manufacturing efficiencies through data products. During today's presentation, I'd like to encourage you to get curious about your own data landscape and imagine a world where data products became essential elements of your data strategy and helped your company drive results. I'm really excited to be here with you all today and guide you through the next 45 minutes along with my co-host and one of our amazing customers, Martin Kemmer, head of Smart Factory at SHOT. Today's session will be highly focused on Martin's experience at SHOT and how he is leading the organization's data strategy to focus on the data mesh approach and his transformational journey to help bring data to the business as he leans into the data as the product principle. Before we get started, let's cover some quick housekeeping. As a reminder, all attendee lines are muted and you can ask questions throughout today's presentation using the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel. Let's go ahead and get into introductions. I'm Maida Tellier, Marketing Director of Product and Content here at One Data. I've spent the last 13 years working as a business leader while also building and managing data teams to support and enable my department with access to and drive data to support business decisions. Prior to One Data, I spent time at Tableau leading our enterprise and IT initiatives where I learned firsthand about the challenges of working in a complex data and IT ecosystem and the challenges a lot of these teams are facing when it comes to managing uh, data and really understanding the complexity of bringing data together. I'm joined today by Martin Kemmer, head of Smart Factory at SHOT. Martin's passion for combining the world of data and software with classic manufacturing processes and understanding the business value behind it is a driver spanning his entire career. After studying computer science and technology in Ravensburg at Tübingen, he jumped into the world of manufacturing at ZF, Friedrich Schaffen, and Voith. Noticing there that there is noticing there that there are even more perspectives to the combination of computer science, data and manufacturing processes, and this is why he completed his executive MBA in technology and management at RWTH Fashion. This in, equipped him perfectly here for his role at SHOT, where he initially led the Department of Solutions and Portfolio Management and has recently been appointed Head of Operational Technology 4.0. So now that you know a little bit about us, let me introduce you to One Data. One Data, formerly One Logic, was started in Germany 10 years ago and was founded on the premise to help companies get started using more of their own data. Today, we enable data experts to build data products that business users need. And we do this with a team of highly experienced data scientists and software engineers who have helped us deliver over 2,000 data product deployments. The process of building and helping companies deliver these data products actually became the foundation for why we developed our core product today, known as One Data's AI Power Data Product Builder. In 2021, Gartner honored our investments in innovation with the AI Technology for Cool Vendor Award, given to companies who are leading in innovation with AI and ML capabilities. Today, every business value chain is highly dependent on the data, and it's only as strong as its weakest data point. In short, every business improvement starts with data and results in a discussion about how to access, how to leverage these data points, and it's often hidden in data silos or simply hard to connect. So we can all agree that the real value is not in storing excessive amounts of data, but it's really in understanding the data landscape that exists, being able to discover it and connect to it to support decision-making. So I already told you, we've got a, a simple solution for this or a feasible solution for this, but there's also several meaningful approaches that one can take. So before we get into Martin's presentation, I'd like to launch a quick poll to understand who we have in the room today. So if you don't mind, let's go ahead and launch this poll. And let's have everyone participate, please. So let me quickly share the results just so everyone can see. So we've got tons of data science, data engineering, data architects in the room. Thank you all for joining us today. Some data and IT leaders, business leaders, as I said, and we are supported with BI analysts. So I think this is actually a great opportunity so that we know who's in the room today for me to turn it over to Martin and actually let him take the stage. Um, Martin, please join me in taking over. Yeah, thank you for the warm welcome, Nida. Um, I'm delighted to be here today and share some insights about uh, data management. 
As Nida mentioned, I have a background in computer science and experience in automotive and mechanical engineering industry as well in the manufacturing industry. So in my role, I have always been responsible for developing smart products and data intensive applications for the business. Um, in the past year, my focus has been primarily on leveraging these developments to accelerate the digital transformation process. Indeed, the concept of a smart factory includes more than just using data for improved decision making. However, a significant part of our mission is to assist the business by providing support and data management and delivering valuable solutions in that context. Um, I work uh, at SHOT, an international technology company which uh, expertise in special glass, glass ceramic, and other innovative materials. Uh, we are affiliated with the Carl Zeiss Foundation and have a workforce over um, 18,000 employees worldwide. Um, I will tell you um, the story um, of why we started to rethink our data management strategy and where we are now, um, what were the motivations and what challenges did we face. Um, yeah, companies, um, as you know, have been using data for decades. Um, and in today's business landscape, it is clearer than ever before that data holds a real business value for every organization. The process to utilize data for improving decision-making processes has increased significantly in the recent years. Business must more agile, flexible, resilient, and capable of navigating in the VUCA world now. However, the journey to become a data-centric enterprise is extremely challenging and time-consuming. It goes behind just implementation new technology. It requires rethinking how we manage and use data. Success can only be achieved if we consider technology, people, culture, processes, and the business goals. While I won't be able to cover all aspects um, of this journey today, um, I will highlight a few key points. I will focus on our approach and learnings at SHOT, but also integrate my experience um, from the last past years, where I have been working to help the business become more data-driven. Uh, but we will see that a radical different approach to data architecture is necessary to create and grow the data-centric enterprise. So let's start to go from numerous data sources and disconnect the data sets to domain-oriented quality check data products and the data marketplace. Making the right decision is crucial for the success of any company. At short, data serve as the foundation on which we build a smart factory, not only because we have the technology, but because we can leverage it to enhance our competitive advantage. Our ultimate goal is to make better decisions more frequently recognize that data is continuously increasing in its business value. The demand for improving decision-making processes is high, given the dynamic nature of today's business environment, where quick and informed decisions are essential. Furthermore, there's an increasing need for agility and flexibility as the business must swiftly respond to ever-changing uh, market conditions. If we simplify, so, sorry, um, if we simplify the data user's perspectives uh, for a data-driven decision-making process for the moment, there are more or less two ways how we use data to make decisions. The first one is the local approach, which involves working within specific domains or data silos. The data stored in the state local databases is accessible and sufficient for the user's needs. So there are usually no significant issue in this context and the global one, which we need a highly aggregated data view on the business KPIs. Usually they are also fine because they often don't know how messy and with how many manual effort the data aggregated for her. And probably both will say it make decision based on data. Of course, in both scenarios, there's potential for improvements such as fast adaption of new requirements, enhancement in data quality, in data governance, more automated processes, and so on, which is also important to improve the data-driven decision process. However, if you have a business that is no longer satisfied with only optimizing the local level and instead aims to optimize the entire value stream, essentially become a data-driven company, you require a different perspective on data. At this point, we considered how we must change our data management approach 
to build real value out of the data, we must be able to answer relevant business and customer questions holistically. To achieve that, we are adopting a holistic approach to thinking data and decision making. For instance, from order to delivery. The key value lies in integration, connecting and transformation data from data silos into business value, which means we need to utilize and connect various data sources and data sets and provide the data in a secure, quality assured, reliable and comfortable way to the domain experts. This enables us to gain transparency across the entire value stream, allowing us to comprehend the reason behind events. Additionally, we get the predictability, which means we are well prepared for future currencies. All in all, it's about increasing transparency, flexibility, speed, efficiency, and sustainability in all relevant business processes. So far, so good, um, but why isn't it so easy and straightforward? So this is because there are numerous data and organizational silos. When we attempt to bring all this to together, we must address challenges related to data integration, data transformation. Once we solve the initial integration, transformation, and interoperability challenge, we then encounter data management and data governance challenges. Subsequently, there are usability and discoverability challenges and so forth. All these aspects are closely related to people, culture, processes, and business goals. To truly become a data-driven, we must take all these challenges into one account. To provide you an abstract visualization, I have included some of our challenges on the slide. However, the significance of these challenges in terms of their impact and success or failure relies on the business context and existing data management strategies in your company. And be aware how crucial is the company culture. Another important aspect I would like to mention and something that I appreciate about my job is that once you have solved the current challenges, you can expect new one to arise. At organization and framework mature, new challenges will occur. Therefore, it is essential to continuously assess your current position in the journey and address the existing challenges. Some challenges or questions may only become relevant as you progress to the next level of maturity. For instance, the issue of insufficiency, emergency, and self-organization in the data domains may not be crucial initially. But if you enable the first domain teams and the mesh begins to expand rapidly, it becomes increasingly important. So what could be a solution, um, at least in our context um, at SHOT? Our solution, um, data mesh at SHOT, it may sound simply, but it is not. So two years ago, we didn't have a clear vision to implement this new data mesh approach. We were primarily focused on solving challenges within our business and socio-technical system. However, as we progressed in the last few months, we noticed that the concept of data mesh aligns well with our vision and strategy. Consequently, we made the decision to name our approach data mesh to facilitate communication and collaboration. Data mesh is about focus on data products promoting decentralized creation and ownership of these products within the respective lines of business. This approach is built up on self-service analytics infrastructure and the federated data governance model, incorporating a high level of automation. On the other hand, a socio-technical system is a concept used to describe a complex integrated system that includes both social and technical components. The term was initially introduced by Thurst and Bramford. The idea behind the social technical system is that organizations or systems are not only composed of technology and people working isolation, but rather they are interdependent and interconnected. 
In the social technical system, the social aspect refers to the people, their rules, interaction, values, and organizational culture. The technical aspect refers to the tools, technology, processes, and infrastructure uses in the system. The main principle of a social technical system is that both the social and the technical elements are integrated and designed to complement each other, optimizing overall performance and well-being. So I will highlight certain characteristics of a socio-technical system that will demonstrate why it makes sense to consider this system thinking approach for the topic of data manage, at least in my opinion. The first one, interdependency. Changes in one component, either social or technical, can impact the other components within the system. Holistic approach. Social technical systems consider the entire system as a whole, rather than focusing only on individual components. Flexibility and adaptability. The system is designed to be flexible and able to adapt to changing conditions and requirements. Participation and autonomy. Employees are participants within the system are often given a degree of autonomy and are encouraged to participate in decision-making process. Last one, performance optimization. The primary aim of a social technical system is to achieve optimal performance and well-being by considering the interplay of social and technical factors. So with this information in our backpack, we can consider how data mesh concepts can help to solve our data mesh challenges. So back to the context of data-driven business, we required a considerable amount of distributed data to make informed decision for the success of the business. I have adjusted the figure accordingly. At the top level, we have the business, its domains, and the questions that, in, that need to be answered with data. At the bottom, there are numerous distributed data sources. Some of these are significant global data sources, such as ERP, CRM, and IoT platform. Additionally, there are many local data sources in the factories. This kind of data structure exists across all factories, resulting in a plenty of distributed data sources. Without easy, secure, and flexible data access, or without having to invest significant time repeatedly to obtain the necessary data, the business would lack an efficient way to make the right decision. Clearly, this poses a problem, as without solution, data-driven decision-making cannot be effectively facilitated. To address this issue, we began with two crucial aspects building data as product and data governance. Building data as product means empowering business domains experts to handle this process independently. So it is essential that this process is made extremely user-friendly and easy, as if it takes weeks or months to create a data product, nobody will do this. The second significant step involves implementing a data governance framework which initially emphasize on data quality and data security. Initially, both aspects were supported by a central department consisting of experts who trained and enabled the domain to understand the philosophy and the implementing it on their own. It was also essential to ensure that technology used for data product and data governance had the necessary capabilities. In addition to the necessary technology for building data products, ensuring data governance, and empowering the business domain with ownership, we also required a self-serve data platform. This platform will enable us to manage and support all these aspects from a technical perspective. The underlying concept of a self-service data infrastructure is based on the idea that a business is composed of logically autonomous domains. Each domain not only serves as a specific business function, product or process, but also generates data products and therefore requires a data infrastructure to do that. 
data infrastructure act as a platform offering common tools, capabilities for storage, virtualization, management. This approach accelerate implementation and relies data products and consumers of the burden of constructing, constructing their own data asset platform. In our case, the self-serve data platform includes capabilities such, such as storage and query engine, data catalog, access management, monitoring and logging, and policy automation. By utilizing this platform, the domains can focus on building high quality data products, which ultimately contribute to the business value in the form of data analytics. With the integration of all the required concepts in this solution, we can effectively implement the data mesh approach. So the data as product concept is extremely important. In other words, data governance, self-serve infrastructure and domain ownership serve as a supporting feature to effectively implement and deliver valuable data products. So viewing data products as a source of where you means knowing how data consumers are using your data products and continuously improving the data products to be better meet their needs. We have adopted a three-tier approach to data products. So it's worth noting that we started this concept before being familiar with the data mesh framework. So this is why we had different names initially in our approach and why I added these um, names also to the slide. However, the underlying motivation remains comparable. We develop data products that can be seen as representation of raw data or aligned with specific data sources. The subsequent layer consists of domain data products, which are aligned with the needs of consumers. These products hold even greater value for the business, particularly when utilized across different domains. The final layer comprises the use case data products or aggregated data products. These products are more specific, similar to domain data products and hold significant value for dedicated use case or business decision. It is crucial to understand that the data products do not necessarily need to be built on top of each other within these layers. Each product hold, holds its own inherent value and is designed to be decoupled and interoperable. Future more data products should pose the qualities of being discoverable, addressable, trustworthy, self-describing, interoperable and secure. To provide a more practical perspective, think about what is essential for a customer when, develop, when, when developing, um, for example, a traditional product. So the same principles apply to data products. In our context, the entire company could be considered as a customer of our data product. However, in the future, external companies or domains may also become customers for your data product. If it helps, you can also refer to the, to the, 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 the consumer instead of customers. So from a technical standpoint, a data product required additional content to be considered complete. The key elements that are crucial for us include the actual data, the metadata, the access pattern, and the code used to construct the data product. These artifacts collectively contribute to the composition and functionality of the data product. So let's make it more understandable with an example of our global KPI reporting. So the operational data source in different factories mainly include manufacturing execution systems and similar systems such as custom developed databases, all serving the same business purpose. On the left hand, we have the data products that represent standard raw data from SHOT, which are used to access production related data sets. On the right hand side, we have raw data products that are specific to each individual factory location. To enable a data product owner to work with this data products effectively, we need source aligned data products. Moving to the next layer, 
we have aggregated data products. There should be one for each factory location. These data products may include data sets and KPIs. However, through the data contract, we ensure that the data product provides the necessary data set for the consumer line data products. The consumer line data product incorporates the data products from all locations and calculates additional KPIs. So let us go to the, our approach. So companies have been, uh, so for the implementation, uh, we primarily use two approaches. Um, so on the one hand, um, the use case driven approach and on the other hand, the strategy driven approach. So the use case driven approach is relatively straightforward. We identify a specific use case and then proceed to implement data products that are required to support that use case. Of course, during this process, we take into consideration the relevant aspects of creating data as product, which involves discussing and how to design the product, such as utilizing domain-driven design approaches. On the other hand, the strategy-driven approach focuses on maximizing the value of the overall system. So this means that the business will only adapt and integrate the data mesh if there are valuable data products available. If certain data sets are in high demand by consumers or data product builders, uh, such as the material master data um, lack corresponding data products, it will result in reduced acceptancy and usage of data mesh, which means the network becomes more valuable as more data products becomes available. Due to more, sometimes it is beneficial to construct, in the best case, highly automated uh, raw data abstraction layer for specific data sources. These topics are an integral part of the strategic approach. So of course, there are technology required for data as self-service and for building data products. But if we build data-centric enterprise and the data culture where employees are each to use and apply new data services within their rules, therefore, a culture transformation is required too. Data democratization is reached when organization makes data accessible to all employees and stakeholders and educates them on how to work with data, regardless on their technical background. We have already succeeded in setting up the technical infrastructure for data as a self-service and have developed the initial data products. At this point, the domain experts have already completed the development of the first data products and ownership has been transferred to the data product owners. So we are now beginning to implement the federated governance operating model. This involves documenting, communicating, and transitioning governance from a central department to the entire organization. What have we learned so far? So to assess and persistently question, so what are the challenges in your context? What is really required to make your business competitive today and in the future? Second, it's not so fast as you maybe expect. You can decouple the tech, you cannot decouple the technical and so social systems. Changes take time and a learning organization. Another um, interesting point is the data reuse. So the data reuse uh, regarding data products is um, greater than we expected. The process of building data products should be as simple and user-friendly as possible. If you want to make decisions based on data, the data must be trustworthy. This is even more challenging when you use data from outside your company. Most of the data is already available in the company, but it is not discoverable. So that was a brief overview of the data mesh journey at shot. So to be honest, 
it only scratched the surface and there are many other fascinating topics we could discuss. However, I hope you were able to take away one or two valuable insights for your challenges. So if you're interested into this subject, I would be delighted to continue the conversation over LinkedIn or other challenge. So thank you for your attention and I will hand over back to Nida. Thank you so much for the conversation, Martin, and for sharing your experience here. Um, obviously, there's a lot of content to cover. And so if you do have questions, I would suggest you drop them into the Q&A section of the GoToWebinar panel for things that were covered or additional questions that you might have as you embark on your journey. Um, what we're going to actually do next is have a quick understanding of what are the challenges that the audience is facing and those of you who are in the room. So I'm going to go ahead and launch a quick poll. And if you wouldn't mind participating, we'd be greatly appreciated. So we'll let this run for no more than a minute. And, and then we will keep going and move into the next segment. Okay, thank you so much for participating. Get those last votes in. I'm gonna go ahead and close the poll, and share the results. So we can all see that data quality is one of the top issues organizations are facing. I'm sure it was hard to select just one issue here. Uh, access to source systems, not being able to see the data that's available for analysis, also a challenge and followed up by missing context about available data or unknown ownership. Well, the positive news is there is a solution for this. And actually, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about that. So. Basically, there is an evolution, a tipping point taking place in the market. I think we can all see and understand that there are several challenges that we're all facing. Uh, data warehouses were really great for a fundamental solution to capture and consolidate structured data and curated data. Uh, they helped us gain access to the right data we could analyze. Data lakes came along and those promised greater access to understand unstructured data and really providing data scientists with a broader range of data to actually use for analysis but this also came with high cost and low flexibility. So today we find ourselves at a point where we really need to understand how we can better provide access to the organization to actually be able to take advantage of the data that we've been collecting, regardless of where it's living today. And that's where the data mesh approach comes into fruition. So the data mesh approach allows organizations to take greater advantage of the data, leaving data where it is, connecting it, to allow for greater access, visibility, and discovery of new data assets that is actually resulting in insights that ultimately can result in decisions. So this is actually exactly why we built One Data. So One Data is the AI-powered data product builder. We enable data teams to ingest data from across silos, including internal, external, or independent market data, and bring it into a single product that you can actually build and deliver data, build and deliver data products um, to be able to discover data assets. The builder automatically creates a comprehensive view of your data asset landscape and provides an interactive data map that becomes a foundation for end-to-end -end data product creation, exploration, and the delivery of data products to a centralized data product marketplace. This data product marketplace actually becomes a reliable and centralized location for business users data uh, experts, including business analysts or data scientists to actually be able to access, to be able to share, to be able to request data products that can be used not only for their, from their own domain, but across the business. The product provides data experts with the visibility into available connection points between data assets, showing record linkage, edges, available matches between data assets, and really giving them the ability to quickly understand the data landscape and also identify connection points within those data assets. You can actually trace back and understand data lineage. So if you've developed a data product, you're able to look back and actually see where the data challenges or issues might be stemming from, whether it's into the assets or source systems. So you can more quickly identify the actual challenges that are popping up within the data products. For organizations exploring or pursuing data mesh, One Data makes this much easier for you. It's not an easy process, but we, we try to ease the entire process of what you're doing. And this is how our team is really thinking about the product that they're building. 
So let me transition into just some of the highlights of the capabilities. So you can see that we actually have a range of capabilities that we offer within the product. And part of what we're offering and looking at is really helping organizations increase the speed in which they are able to deliver data. And that's any front, anything from connecting, uh, preparing data assets to quality checks that you can actually run within the platform, um, whether they're manual, semi-automated, or fully automated data quality checks. And that can be run across the your entire data product landscape. You can actually deploy the data products into third-party tools. So think about access between Tableau, Power BI, or any of your analytics dashboards. You can actually deploy them into products like Data Bricks, or you could even connect them into third-party cloud warehouses like Snowflake. So what we're looking to do is really look at the build creation of build once, use many, and then to be able to reuse data products that actually result in advanced use cases. So we actually fit into your existing ecosystem. So as Martin was talking about, there's obviously a lot of tools that are on the market. There's a lot of systems, there's a lot of warehouses, but one data actually fits into the greater stack and allows you to take greater advantage of the tools that you have in place today. And finally, you know, what we are very focused on as an organization is really helping to bridge the last mile from data sets to data monetization via data products. And this is where we really want to help organizations understand that there's a greater world to be had. There's more access to data that can be had. And this is really the benefit of using data products. So if we want to progress uh, onto the next slide, we can actually see that there are several use cases to not only use data products, but how they can be used within the tools, reporting ecosystems we live in, how they can fuel applications or progress algorithm development that ultimately result in insights, questions answered, and ultimately hopefully helping businesses innovate and find monetary value, whether it's cost savings or revenue generation. But we actually really believe that there is a great solution here. We believe this is the future of what data products can bring to organizations, but really a better way to take more advantage of the data. So let's talk a little bit about some additional benefits. Um, we believe that data teams and data experts are looking to become the data heroes for their organization. We all want to solve business problems. We all want to use more of the data. And so data leaders and their teams need a solution that actually helps them deliver data to the business in a streamlined way. Data product consumers like business stakeholders, BI or data experts are able to access data build data products, or even reuse cross-organizational data products, which means that you're able to do more with less. So with our AI-powered data product builder, you can achieve several long-term benefits. And there are several different pieces depending on how your organization is thinking about the approach, what are the most uh, important objectives you have, that you will see different benefits across different areas of the business. So I think we've covered a lot of content today. What I want to do is go ahead and open it up to Q&A um, because I know we have several great questions that the team has and that our attendees have for Martin.